A regular whacking noise is not something you want to hear while strolling through a spaceship crash site that's been reclaimed by Forrest. The locals had promised that nothing dangerous would come near us while we delivered their supplies, but clients had been wrong before. Also, we'd already delivered the stuff, so maybe that promise didn't cover the walk back. And anyway, even a timid herbivore can get wild when it's tangled in debris. Thinking of several unfortunate animals I'd known in my veterinarian days, I glanced down at Paint to see if she'd noticed the sounds. Paint's eyes were wide. She moved with more lizard-like twitchiness than usual, her head skipping side to side, scanning the bushes and twisted metal like she'd smelled something that wanted to eat us, but wasn't sure if it had spotted us yet. I stopped walking. In an undertone, I asked, Do you want to take a different route? Paint froze, snout still moving. Maybe. Another whack sounded. I opened my mouth to suggest a detour around the tallest chunks of hull or whatever they were when I heard something that made it all better. Murr complaining. Oh, for the sake of sudden waves, aim to the left. The answering voice was more subdued, but sounded testy. The whacking stopped. Paint managed to perk up and relax at the same time. Oh, it's them! She took off through the undergrowth, faster than was probably wise, given that her species wasn't fond of shoes. I hurried after. A big section of wall loomed ahead, made of something too smooth for alien moss to grow on. The voices were coming from the other side. Paint beat me there. Hey, she said brightly. I thought your delivery was in the other direction. I caught up, swinging around the corner to find squid-like myrrh perched on a hover sled full of small boxes, though with one conspicuous empty spot, while Cole stood nearby. He held a long cable in both scaly hands, like he'd been whipping something with it. It is, Murr said to Paint, waving a tentacle half-heartedly in greetings. Local fauna stole a box. Where? I asked, looking sharply for anything that could have been on the receiving end of that cable whip. But Coles pointed up, up to where the smooth wall gave way to exploded metal shapes, with a familiar white plasteel shipping box caught between them. No fauna in sight. It flew off right away, Coles told me, pulling the cable back to sling it in an underhanded throw that rebounded off the wall with a familiar sound. Oh dear, Paint said. Yeah, Murr grumbled. Luckily our client specified they'd be there all day, otherwise we would be very late. Why not call back to the ship, I asked, looking for something to climb, but coming up with nothing. That, said Coles, throwing again, would be embarrassing. Why, I asked, looking at Murr. He sighed drooping back like a deflating balloon. Both Trilly and Z volunteered for this delivery, but we'd already claimed it, and we told them it was fine. And, I said, visualizing one of our insect-like crewmates stretching up the wall farther than I could ever reach. They'd never let you live it down. Oh yeah, they'd be insufferable, Murr said. I don't even know if Z could reach it, but Trilly definitely could, and neither of them would let that go in a hurry. I really thought I could get it with this, Cole said. Can I try? I asked. He willingly handed it over, and I gave it a shot, having better luck with an overhanded angle that human shoulders were more suited to. I hit the box squarely, with a resounding whack from above and a cheer from paint, but the box just rattled in place. I kept at it. Finally my arms were tired and the box was still up there. We might just have to call it in, guys, I said. Murr groaned theatrically while Coles wordlessly took the cable back to give it another go. Paint looked around. Isn't there anything else we can do? she asked. Murr ticked things off on his tentacles. Can't reach it. Can't dislodge it. This sled's height only adjusts a little. Nothing to climb up. Nothing to climb down. No friendly local fauna ready to give it back. If you have other ideas, I am ready to catch them. He splayed his tentacles in a sunray pattern that looked more than a little sarcastic but as I looked at the misshapen metal hanging above us and the lower curve behind us that could be climbed onto and the nice sturdy cable, I had the seed of an idea. What if we swing up to it? I suggested. What? Murr asked. How do you mean? Coles asked, stepping away as the cable fell after a particularly awkward throw. We can loop the cable over that part, I said, warming to the idea. I pointed up at what might have been an internal hull beam once, then swing up like it's a vine, or wait, even better. I scrambled over to where a rectangular grate poked out of a shrub, 
Hopefully the plant wasn't poisonous. We can tie it to this. Paint cocked her head at a sharp angle. Why? To make a swing, I said, grinning as I yanked it free. The thing wasn't even that heavy. Perfect. While my alien co-workers watched, I set about making the most epic of playground swings from broken spaceship junk. The cable flew over the beam just fine. It didn't even hit anyone in the head on the way down. Fastening it to the sides of the grate was a little tricky, but I was able to shove it through the holes and tie a pair of bulky knots underneath that probably wouldn't come loose mid-swing. Probably. I checked the area for anything especially sharp just in case. Flying off to smack into a wall would be bad enough without the chance of impaling myself on the remains of some spacefaring bathroom sink. Are you sure about this? Paint asked as I clambered up onto the curved thing, towing the swing along with one hand. All the pieces look strong enough, I said. I'd done plenty of tugging, to be sure. And the box isn't really that high up, all things considered. Murr saluted with two tentacles, not moving from the sled. Better you than me. That's the spirit, I laughed. Getting into position was more of a delicate affair than I'd expected, since the cable didn't reach quite far enough. Guess I'd just have to do a bit of hop and butt shuffle. But, Paint said anxiously. Coles put a hand on her shoulder. The physics holds up, he said. I don't think it's scary for a human. Not a bit, I agreed. Here goes. With that, I jumped into position on the grate, swinging forward at a speed that would have made little playground monkey child me clap for joy. I almost reached the box on the first swing. Paint sounded disappointed, but she was clearly unfamiliar with the fine art of pumping the legs. Another couple goes, and I swung high enough to catch a hand on a jutting bit of something at the peak of my swing. I hung there for a heartbeat, both arms looped around the cable, extremely aware of the long drop below me. Then I stuck a leg out and kicked the box free. It was sturdy enough to land in one piece. Before letting go, I made certain that I was in position with my other hand clutching the cable, with the appropriate amount of nerves. Then I let go of the bar and fell. The swing downward was much more adrenaline-ridden than the ride up, with a moment of freefall before the cable jerked taut and bounced me back toward my original launch platform. I held that cable in a death grip, pressing my butt into the grate hard enough to leave a waffle pattern that I would tell no one about. I almost hit my foot on a spar that I hadn't gone near the first time, but I made it. When the swing finally slowed enough for me to drag my feet through the rubble, paint ran over, full of praise. You did it, that was amazing. Nice kick, Coles added. He put the box onto the cart, not a scratch on it. Murr moved out of the way. We may just have to tell the others after all, because that was impressive. Glad it worked, I said, getting back onto my feet with only a little shakiness. This stuff made a great swing. Pity we can't take it with us. Paint craned her neck up at it. You said this is something from a recreation center. Is it spacefarer training for acceleration? I laughed at that. No, I said, human training for being a human. Kids love these. They even have special seats for babies who can't hold themselves in place yet. Paint looked horrified. Coles just shook his head quietly while Murr did some chuckling of his own. That explains so much about you, Murr said. Come on, let's drop this off, then go tell Trilly. Maybe next time we visit a human settlement they'll have one of these big enough for her to ride. She'd hate it. Coles nodded. She would. Paint grimaced, but said nothing. I smiled. I actually do know a place like that. Of course you do, said Murr. Onward.